A few years ago, I was spending $20,000 a month on Facebook ads for a digital product where we were generating between 300 and 400% return on ad spend. Now, it sounds pretty good, but with everything I know now, when I look back, I realized I made a series of mistakes that left a ton of money on the table. And what I realize is lots of people are making the exact same mistakes today, and they're going to look back in a few years and have the exact same regrets that I do now. So in this video, I'm going to share the advice I would give to my past self so that you don't make those same mistakes today. So what I can tell you right now, without a doubt, is that in a year, two years, three years, Facebook ads are going to be significantly more expensive than they are right now. So if you've got something that's working well right now, it's probably not going to be working in a couple of years time unless you do the things that I'm going to walk you through in this video. Because your costs will rise, your margins will compress to the point that it just no longer works. And as a result, you're going to have to stop spending and move on to something else. And trust me, watching that gradual decline, it's not fun. So to prevent that happening, here's what I would tell past Andrew. The first thing is spend as much as you can while you can. Meaning when you've got something that works, when your return on ad spend is good, you should scale and spend as much money as you possibly can to acquire as many leads and customers as possible while the going is good. When we were spending $20,000 a month and generating $60,000 a month, sure, that was a 300% return on ad spend, which is fantastic. And it was $40,000 a month in profit. Great. But it's quite likely we could have scaled that to $40,000 a month and generated $100,000 in revenue. Sure, we take a hit on our ROAS and it drops to 250%, but now we're generating $60,000 a month in profit instead of $40,000 a month. But what's really important though, and what I really wanna make sure you understand here, is that by spending that extra money, we're actually bringing in a lot more leads, meaning email subscribers, and buying a lot more customers, meaning we've got a lot more people who've now purchased from us as well. And that's really important for the long-term success of a business. We'll talk about this more as we go through the video so you understand why that's so important and how to capitalize on it. But just know that the more leads you acquire now and the more customers you acquire now, the better off you'll be a few years down the track. If we take this example again, what if we spent $100,000 and generated $180,000 in revenue. Now again, we see the return on ad spend compressed to 180%, but we see our profit increase to $80,000. And again, we're getting significantly more leads into the business. Our email list is growing much, much more, and we're again acquiring many more customers. So ROAS is great, but overall, if you can generate more of a net profit, then you should be spending more, especially when you're acquiring more leads and sales. There are actually many businesses out there now acquiring leads on Facebook and breaking even on the front end because they know in the back end of their business, those leads are going to generate much more revenue for them over time. So they're willing to break even on ad spend in order to generate future profits for the business. Now that leads onto the next piece of advice I would give past Andrew, which is to maximize the amount of revenue you're generating from every lead and every customer. You should be treating these leads like a long-term asset. There are far too many people who are just looking at how much can I spend today and how much can I generate in revenue today? There's too much short-term focus on how much can I spend this week and how much can I generate in return on this week and that's all that matters. It's even more important to think about the leads you are bringing into the business, how you're going to continue to nurture them and how you're going to turn more of them into customers over time. And then once you turn more of them into customers, how are you going to generate more revenue from those customers over time as well? So there are a few ways to do this. One of them is to offer more products. Think about how can I create more products that maybe the people who didn't buy from me would want? And then how can I create products that the people who have purchased from me would want as well? So you need to think about what do my current customers want or need or what are they going to want or need in the future? And the people who I'm bringing onto my list who didn't buy this one product, how can I serve them as well? What else can I create? What else can I add to my sales funnel or to my back end system that I can offer those people? Because what happens is you're going to be bringing all of these email subscribers into your business. A small percentage, maybe 5% are going to be buying your initial offer. And the other 95% 
aren't going to be buying anything from you at first. If you never offer those 95% anything in the future, or if you don't have a way to monetize those leads, you are leaving a significant amount of money on the table. So make sure you have other products and services to offer them. One way you could do this is through Ascension. So if somebody goes through an online course of yours, maybe the next logical step that they would want is coaching from you. And then maybe the next logical step after that is a mastermind. So having those different things that they can ascend into is going to bring you more revenue and it's going to create happier customers. Another way to think about it is what else would they want that solve other problems they have? For example, if I have a course on ads, maybe those same people are interested in learning about email marketing or sales funnels or maybe even automation. So how can I offer products and services in those different areas as well? And that doesn't have to mean that you have to create all of these different products and offers yourself. You could actually find products, programs, services that other people offer and you can recommend them. So if somebody you know has a great product or service that your audience would love and that fits nicely with what you're offering, you can have an affiliate partnership with them, meaning that you recommend their offers to your leads and if they buy, you get a certain percentage of the revenue. There are actually many ways you can do this. You can recommend tools, you can recommend services, you can recommend software, all sorts of different things to your email list and to your leads that are going to both help the people on your list and generate revenue for you. A really good example of this that I saw recently was somebody called Niche Site Lady who I found on Twitter. I joined her email list and over the course of the next couple of weeks, she sends out a series of really good, helpful emails. But inside of each of those emails, she also makes recommendations. For example, one of those emails talked about how she creates graphics for her business, for things like her promotions, for social media and all of that. And she mentioned that the tool she uses is Canva Pro. And that link for Canva Pro happened to be an affiliate link. So she's providing me with value. I found that email quite helpful, but at the same time, if I click that link and purchase Canva Pro, she gets a cut. So while I might have been a lead on her email list who didn't actually directly pay her any money, she can now make money from me as a lead if I click and buy through that affiliate link. And she didn't just do it once. There were a whole series of emails that just casually mentioned different software and different tools where she would link to them. And I'm sure a pretty good percentage of her email list at some point buys something from her affiliate links and generates revenue for her. So this means that for every lead she acquires, she's now creating significantly more revenue for her business than if she was just offering one thing. Now at this point, I think it's really important to remind you of why this is so valuable. Because as your ad costs are rising, and your return on ad spend is getting squeezed. If you are generating more revenue in your business from every lead that comes in, it means that as those ad costs rise, it doesn't affect you as much because you're generating more revenue on the back end for every dollar you're spending on Facebook ads, meaning that you can continue to advertise, you can continue to scale. And those campaigns that would otherwise have become unprofitable or not as profitable as before, are now actually maintaining a really good ROAS because you focused on the back end and you're generating more revenue per lead and you're generating more revenue per customer as well. Another really clever way to increase your revenue per lead is through newsletter sponsorship. For whatever reason, very few people think about this. But if you're sending out a weekly email to your list and you're paying thousands of dollars a month to buy leads through Facebook ads, so your email list is growing every single month and you're sending out an email every single week, why not get paid every time you send that email. And the way to do it is to have deals with brands to sponsor your newsletter. So you're sending out the exact same newsletter, but in each one, you're mentioning a sponsor. And in exchange for mentioning that sponsor, you're getting paid. So now you move to a situation where instead of just earning revenue when people buy your products and services, you're actually earning revenue on a weekly basis through these email sponsorships. And I understand this isn't for everyone, but for the businesses with a good weekly newsletter where monetizing it through sponsorship makes sense, it can be a really good model. One example of this that I've seen recently is Cody Sanchez from the Contrarian Thinking newsletter. Her newsletter is really, really good. I love the content. And her main product that she sells is a membership. So in every newsletter, she has great content, she promotes her membership, but what I've noticed now is she also has a sponsor. And so there's a little section in the newsletter that just mentions her sponsor and has a link that goes to them. So that means that now Cody's still selling her main product, which is the membership. But every time she clicks send on that newsletter every week, she's generating sponsorship revenue as well. 
So again, those leads that she's bringing into her business, and if it's you and you're bringing in those leads via Facebook ads or any other channel, all of those leads are now worth more. And that sponsorship money is going to go up every month because you're getting more and more leads. So again, even as the ad costs are rising, because you're generating more revenue, you can absorb more of those costs and you can scale higher and keep advertising for longer before the music stops. Speaking of newsletters, if you like this content and you want more content like this delivered to your inbox to help you become a better advertiser and a better marketer in general, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. That's in the description box below. Now on to my next piece of advice that I would tell past Andrew, and that is to leverage other traffic channels now before things get tough. So what I wish I did back then and what I do now is when Facebook ads are going really well, start to advertise on or start to look at other traffic channels that I can leverage as well. Because if I know that Facebook ad costs are going to rise, but they're working well now, then chances are other traffic channels are going to work well now as well. So why not leverage those to generate more revenue while I can? And that also creates an insurance policy for me. So if Facebook ad costs rise or if Facebook ads stop working for any reason. And I have these other channels that are bringing me traffic leads and sales so that even if that happens, the business doesn't stop completely. One thing I always do now is work on organic traffic as well as paid. So I'm always either blogging or doing something like YouTube for whatever business I'm working on, as well as my paid strategy. So another piece of advice here that I'll give you is to be always working on at least one other organic traffic channel, as well as whatever paid is working for you. Because organic takes longer to get going, but once it's working well, it will serve you for a long, long time. Whereas paid traffic, it works well, and it's a quick way to get a big hit of traffic, but we know costs are going to rise, which is the whole point of this video. And so if and when that happens, if you've built a really solid organic traffic source as well, then again, you can cope with rising costs because you're getting traffic from multiple sources and organic traffic doesn't cost you anything on a day to day basis, apart from content creation, of course, which is a beautiful thing. So recapping where we are to this point, I would tell my past self, spend as much as you can now while things are going well and focus on acquiring as many leads and customers as you possibly can while maintaining whatever profit margins you need to. The second thing is focus on generating as much revenue per lead and revenue customer as you can. Build out those backend systems to generate more revenue over the long term from every lead that you buy from Facebook. And focus on other channels as well. Don't just get tunnel vision and focus on Facebook and Instagram ads only. Look at what other traffic sources, particularly organic, you can start to leverage now while things are good. That will help serve you when your Facebook and Instagram ad costs inevitably rise. Now, as those costs start to rise, you're probably going to look for ways to keep them down as well. So make sure you watch this video next, which will help you lower your Facebook ad CPM to keep costs down as much as possible for as long as possible. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know what you thought in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.